Hey everyone, in today's video I would like to talk to you about the Synology firewall and how you can create some rules. So first of all, the Synology firewall is a security element that will help prevent unauthorized access to your NAS. It allows you to create rules that will either allow or block incoming traffic only. It does not take outgoing traffic into consideration. By default, it is not activated. If activated with default configuration, nothing is blocked because the rule set is empty. Profiles can be created and it can contain different rule set per profile. The firewall should be activated for local traffic, but must be activated if accessed from internet to reduce your attack surface. You can't lock yourself out while applying the rules um, because verification is made first. So for example, you create some rules and uh, by mistake you uh, block the traffic that is used to administer your NAS, you will have a warning stating that the rules can't be applied because you will lock yourself out which is great. And in terms of best practices, uh, you should better, you know, it's, it should be, it is better to allow only traffic that is strictly necessary and to block all the rest. So it would be a whitelisting approach. So as usual for a firewall, the position of the rules um, is important. It is analyzed from the top to bottom. Now, when you created a rule and, for example, it's not in the correct place, you can reorganize them after. If a rule is matched, then it won't go further in the analysis process and the action will be enforced. Now, in terms of priority, rules in the all interfaces, they are first evaluated. If there is a match, it stops here. If there are no match, then rules in specific interfaces are evaluated, depending on which interface the traffic is destined to. If there is still no match after all that, default rule of interface is enforced. And this is either allow access or deny access. And this is a very important part because if you configure all your rules in the all interfaces, then if you um, do not specify a specific deny rule at the end and you forget to configure the firewall rules in the specific interfaces, then you might have a problem because I think that by default, the um, default rule for the interfaces is to allow access. So you might have a lot of rules. You might think that you are secured enough, but that is not the case because the last rule, which is the one of the interface, is configured to allow traffic. Now, in terms of configuration, so you have the source. The source can be all, a specific IP, an IP range, a network, or it can be location-based, so country-based. If country-based is used, then you need also to create a local rule for the local traffic, otherwise it will be blocked. Now for the ports, you have the all, custom, or built-in applications. So if you use a built-in application, then you have, uh, if you choose an application which port is in the application portal, then if the port changes, the rule will change. So there is, um, the, the rule will follow the port that is defined in the application portal if uh, the application is in the application portal. Now, in terms of protocols, you've got TCP, UDP, ICMP, IGMP, and all. And for types, um, you've got source and destination. Um, I'm not really sure that you would have a lot of scenarios where source is needed. Usually, you will configure it for the destination because your NAS is listening on a specific port most of the times. Um, and of course, you can then specify you know, specific ports or a port range. The action will be allow or deny. 
Now, if a reverse proxy is used to access the service, if you are using an Apache um, reverse proxy, for example, then the uh, IP of the reverse proxy must be used as the source. Now, this is what I want to talk to you about in terms of um, services. So if we go to the application portal, here you have some services. And in the firewall configuration, you can choose um, automatically, you know, the name of the application and it will take into consideration the ports. Now, if you change here the port, it will then be modified automatically in the firewall rule. If the application is not here, well, then it will not be taken into consideration. And for example, a package that is not where it's not the case, it's the web dev package. The web dev package is not here. And the, um, the service that you will see in the firewall rule is not this one. So you've got to go to the security tab and then firewall. So you first got to enable the firewall. And then you got an option which is called enable firewall notifications. This is practical because when you are going to install a package and this package needs you know, to be accessed, it runs some network services, there will be a pop-up when you start the package that will tell you that it needs uh, you know, this kind of services to be opened on the firewall. You can either accept or deny. If you know what you are doing, you can uh, discard this alert and use the only services that you find necessary. For example, in my case, I have specified each port individually. I did not use the application, um, you know, the application based rules um, and I never followed the notifications. Sometimes I take the notifications into consideration just to better understand what kind of services are needed and then I will make a filter out of it. Now, here, for example, as I said, I'm using a reverse proxy. So to access my NAS, my services, my uh, packages ports, I'm specifying here the, um, the reverse proxy. So as you can see, you've got the destination port of type TCP, the different services that I've got, the ports on which the NAS is listening to, you can also specify a port range if you want to. You can also specify here uh, some ranges. I think you have to put a dash between the ports to specify a range. Um, I'm not sure actually if you put it here, um, if you want to, if you want to have you know multiple ranges or if you have to do it here. Now just, uh, just have a doubt. So you can have all, you can have select from a list of built-in applications. So here, as you can see, we've got a lot of services. You saw before, probably, um, maybe you saw some of those services like calendar F or file station. Uh, those are in the uh, built-in application. So if I select the calendar, if I change the services, uh, the ports, it will change also in the firewall rule. Now for WebDAV, this is a good example because WebDAV, if I can find it, uh, we cannot search for it. So WebDAV server, for example, those are the default ports when you install the package, but I'm not using them. And as you can see, the ports are not updated. So that means that it confirms that if the application is not in the application portal, the ports will not be updated. And therefore you cannot use the built-in application for this one, unless you keep the default port. In terms of um, IP, so we've got all IPs, you've got specific IP where you can say a single host or a subnet where you have to enter the subnet mask or the IP range. For the location, you can here select the country. So let's say Switzerland. Here you can make a rule based on the country. We're going to make an example right after, and then you have the uh, a possibility to, to deny, to allow or deny the traffic. Now let's see, I would like to create a rule. So I've got one of my rule, um, one of my services, for example, that I'm, trick, um, that I'm not using is the port 6011. As you can see here, the service is blocked. 
by the Synology firewall. Now I'm going to create a role that will be country based. So I'm going to have custom. It's going to be a TCP port. It's going to be 6011 TCP and destination port. For the source IP, let's say for the location, it's going to be Switzerland. Let's enable this. And we're going to allow the traffic. The, and you have here to up put the rule a bit higher because I have a, an explicit deny rule that I will explain after. We are going to save the configuration. And if everything is correct, this rule will not be working. Okay, so I'm going to do it another time. As you can see, it's not working because um, a country-based rule does not concern your local traffic. So that means that I also have to create another rule. I have to say uh, again the same stuff, okay, like this. I'm going to have a specific IP. For example, it's going to be my my range. I think it's this. No, I don't remember. Perfect. Oh, here I made a mistake. It's not in the correct order. And as it's not in the correct order, we can also see that it's not working. Now, I'm just going to correct my mistake. Just put it up. We are going to save the rule. And as you can see, actually, it, um, as it was continuously trying, uh, it then, you know, uh, the firewall took effect and I've got, um, and it's, you know, it, it's working. Now, what do we have again that we can test? Here we are in the old interfaces. If you would like to have a simple setup and you don't want to make, you know, uh, to have rules here and there, you all want everything in one place, for example, but but maybe you might have some specific needs. But in my case, to keep it simple, I have configured everything in the All Interfaces tab. If you go to the uh, LAN, for example, the rule set is empty. I've got no rules. So the system is going to uh, check like this in this order. It's going to check the firewall rules. And as soon as there is a match, it's going to stop. This match can be an allow or block. It does not change. So if you create a rule, for example, um, that you would like, you know, in this subnet, you would like to block someone, like for example, myself, I would like to block my own IP. I would need to create a new rule that would be between the Switzerland rule and this local rule. So like this, in this case, it will block my IP from accessing this traffic, from accessing this service. Now, for example, I made, I almost made a mistake one year ago when I configured my rules uh, because as I am uh, used to work you know, with firewalls, I always specify a, you know, a specific deny rule at the end of the rule set. Okay. I did not take into consideration that here on the LAN one, it was allow access by default. So that means that if I hadn't configured my specific rule here at the end, my specific deny rule at the end, if there was no match, it would have gone through all those rules except the last one, because it, it, it was not existent. Then if I've gone to LAN1, there, there was no rules, then it would have applied the default rule of allow access. So I would have a security problem because well, I've configured everything to be secured, but the last rule was to allow access, which is useless in this case. So this is what you have to be um, to pay attention um, on. You can create a deny rule here at the end, and you can also create um, or specify for each of the interfaces a deny access. Now let's make uh, let's let's have an example. Okay, let's make let's have an example. I'm going to allow access on the land one and all the in the old interface, I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to disable those rules. Okay. So now we are in this situation, for example, where you forget to create a specific deny rule or to 
have you know in the interface you have for, for, for you forgotten to select the uh, deny access rule so now let's see as you can see here it's working so i've got a bunch of rules for security but it's not working it's not you know effective now let's say that for example uh so all every all the traffic is allowed now i'm going to say i'm going to deny access and as you can see i guess here if i if i create another connection as you can see here it's not working now for the same example you know on the opposite uh, test if for example I'm going to select here to deny the traffic, but here I'm going to allow access. Okay, the result here would be that the traffic um, will be blocked. So as we can see here, the traffic is blocked. So this is just to show you, you know, the the, the priority system, and also to be uh, to be aware. Then you need to also configure the um, the interface. Uh, each interface to deny access for example uh, so you don't have uh, suddenly a big security hole which allows everything so i think that's it for this uh, video on firewall i hope you have enjoyed it and see you next time for another one bye bye